Hello everyone and welcome to week number one of the CSHL. Now you're probably wondering what on planet Mars is the CSHL? Well, let me explain it to you. I have coordinated with eight different NHL content creators, whether they be on Twitch, YouTube, or both. And as a result, I have given each of them four random NHL teams, and they had to pick five players from each team to make a completed hockey team roster. I then went and created these teams in NHL 22, where they will play off here in the CSHL. I can't remember if I've already said it or not. So if I have, this part's gonna get cut out, but it's it stands for the uh, Creators Simulation Hockey League because it's just content creators and it's like a simulation thing because, you know, coordinating between all these people, it, it, good luck, right? Too many people, too many hectic schedules. So as a result, it is all going to be simulation based. So without further ado, let me introduce you to the teams. First up, you know him, you hopefully love him. He is the one that will leave out players on teams in videos, ideas all the time and forget about things in videos all the time as well. And people get really mad at him for it. But anyways, um, I'm still trying to figure out if I want to refer to myself in third person or not. Should I be the rock? Should I not? Uh, anyway, well, the, um, let's, no, I'm not going to do that. This is my team. Let's go. The four teams that I received out of the random draw were the New York Islanders, the Detroit Red Wings, the San Jose Sharks, and the Winnipeg Jets. And here's a look at the players that I drafted from these teams. We got Matthew Barzal from the Islanders, Dylan Larkin as the star pickup there from the Red Wings, we got a bunch of solid players from the Sharks and the Jets as well. And introducing next, some call him X-Tech. Some call him the man who made $21 million from playing NHL. I personally call him Brent. He is the man that can understand literally anything, as long as it is given to him in hockey terms. The four random teams that Brent was given to draft from is the Boston Bruins, the New Jersey Devils, the Golden Knights, and the Edmonton Oilers. And once again, let's have a look at the team that Brent has drafted from these four squads, and it would be absolutely filthy if Drysidle McDavid and Pasta made up a line, but who knows if that's what will happen. I'm just, I'm doing best lines for everything, by the way. In my books, this could be one of the favorites to win the tournament, or the league, or whatever you want to call it. I don't really know what it is yet. Next up, we have Tugi, the Tuginator. Toog dog. To this day, I am still very convinced that this could be him. Whoa, whoa, oh, oh, oh. The four random teams given to Tugi are the Minnesota Wild, the Columbus Blue Jackets, the LA Kings, and the Pity Pens. And once again, here is a look at the players that Tugi drafted from these four teams. Next up, we have the fantastic one. The dorsal one. A fellow goalie be a proer. That's right, everybody. We got Finn. The teams Finn was able to select from are the New York Rangers, the Philadelphia Flyers, the Washington Capitals, and the Calgary Flames. He was able to draft from his boys, the Flyers, so he's probably pretty gassed about that. And on top of that, he also got to draft from the Washington Capitals, which I'm a little salty about. But I digress. And up next, the man who I have encountered at Marley's Games and WWE wrestling events. Lovely individual. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the arcade one. It's Phil the Thrill. Phil was assigned the Vancouver Canucks, the Montreal Canadiens, the Nashville Predators, and the Dallas Stars. Here's a look at the team that Phil drafted, and I think the most important player here is you see what I see, Soros. Solid pick, Phil. Next up. I stumbled upon his stream, and I believe Nathan McKinnon did as well. So now I have that in common with Nathan McKinnon. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a beauty. It's Newfie Bullet. Newfie got to select from the St. Louis Blues, the Florida Panthers, the Carolina Hurricanes, and the Arizona Coyotes. It feels really weird pronouncing these team names properly. I genuinely had to stop myself from saying Florida. Anywho, here's the team. And it's a good one. Next up, we have someone who has been fleeced before this league slash tournament thing has even started. No word of a lie, I was just about to record this audio, and I found out Jack Eichel got traded. So he is no longer a member of the Buffalo Sabres and is now a part of the Golden Knights. So, 
Obviously, he had to pick up somebody else, and I gave X-Tech the option to pick up Eichel, which of course he's gonna do. So as a result, Crash has just lost one of his best players before this thing has even started. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, it is Crash Andrews. Crash selected his team from the Ottawa Senators, the Colorado Avalanche, the Buffalo Sabres, and the Seattle Kraken. And here is his Jack eichel list team. I'm so sorry. If I would have got this video out a bit sooner, then you probably still would have had him. But, you know... Sometimes things go, sometimes they don't go. And this time, she just didn't go. Last, and most certainly least. Yeah, no, you heard that right. I'm salty from how much he has beaten me in collapse. It's getting out of hand. Perhaps we will have a rematch in the near future. But, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't guessed it already, and it, well, his logo's on the screen, so you already know. Um, yeah, all, all of these times, you already know the person. I'm kind of just giving them an intro, but their logo's already there. So you already know. But anyway, it is Coca-Cola. Tactics HD. Cole drafted from the Chicago Blackhawks, the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Toronto Maple Leafs, and the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. He got dealt a pretty good hand here, but let's see how his team will perform up against the others in this tournament. I showed the team logos attached to each person, but just in case, I will quickly go over it here. So Tugi will be the Boston Bulldogs, Detroit Dragons, will be Tactics team, the LA Royals will be Crash Andrews team, the Newfoundland Tigers will be representing Newfie Bullet, the Philadelphia Finns will be representing Finn, the Toronto Tomahawks will represent Phil, Vancouver Lumberjacks will represent X-Tech or Brent, and your Washington Wales will be my squad. Now let's go ahead and hop into the first game. All right, let's hop on board with game number one here. We've got the Washington Wales versus the Vancouver Lumberjacks. This is the opening contest for the tournament. We've got two very solid teams here. I mean, to be fair, they're all pretty solid. But anyway, it's gonna be a whole lot of X Factor going on. And for some reason, audio insists on playing out of my control. Oh, this is a real test. If I turn this off, nope, it doesn't stop it. It's just a microphone. Okay, great. Well, I'm gonna stuff my controller under the table for now and just hope that the microphone doesn't pick it up. But um, yeah, anyway, this was. Honestly, this was supposed to be some sort of, like, professional-type broadcast thing. Obviously, I've already blown that. So, might as well, you know, not... <laughs> no point of committing to it. Also, side note, why, in the bottom scoreboard, is there no logos? I'm noticing that now for the first time ever. Is that, like, I don't know, like, when you create teams, is there no logos there? Is there supposed to be a logo there and my game is just cracked? I don't know what's... Oh, there we go! The Washington Wales get on the board first! Nikolai Ehlers gonna bury a rebound there, and that will put Washington up one to nothing here early on in the first period. That's a great start for the Wales. Vancouver Lumberjacks are gonna need to bounce back quick here, but I mean, there's still lots of time left, lots of hockey to be played, so it is only the first. But I can only imagine there's gonna be more with these two incredible teams here. I mean, obviously, the goalies are very good as well, but. They can only do so much. Dreisaitl with the back-to-back -back one touch deeks there. Gets a shot off on Hellebuck, and that will be saved. We got a face-off now to the right of Connor Hellebuck or left. I never know which it refers to. Like, does it refer to him? Or does it refer to, like, you're looking at him kind of thing, you know? Not sure, but it's not important right now. Dreisaitl has the puck. Goes to walk out, but that will be blocked by 13. Now, here goes 7-1. Dylan Larkin... Up the ice, hits Charlie McAvoy, and he will get the puck up to Stone. Stone now spins back, passes to literally nobody. Not sure who he saw there, or if he was just going for a blind pass, because why not? Um, either way, it didn't work out. So maybe, I was about to say, think a little harder on your next pass, and he did. He took my advice before I even said it. Good for him. Drysaddle once again going for the one-touch deke, but that will not work on Washington. Still got the puck here, and we are... Now in the neutral zone. Passing here from Vancouver. Yamamoto is going to get bowled over and he gets hurt. Yamamoto has been injured. I wonder if he's going to be out for the rest of the game or if it's going to be sort of a head to the tunnel and walk it off type injury. We will find out later on in this matchup. Patch ready over to Theodore. Gets it up to Pool Party. Actually, when um, Brent was making this team... I, I found that joke from him. He said pool party, and I really had to think about it for a second because I had no idea who he was talking about. I had to think really hard. I'm like, he's got to be on one of these four teams. Who is it? 
And then I was like, oh, it's got to be Pugliarvi. Hopefully it is Pugliarvi, by the way. If there's some other guy, then that's my bad. But it's too late now, Mr. X-Tech. So, yeah, you're, you're stuck with Pugliarvi now. But I'm pretty sure he is Pool Party. I don't know who else it would be. So, yeah, there's that. I even tried Googling NHL Pool Party. Um, and, uh, it, it, you know, <laughs> no cool events came up or anything. It was just nothing. I don't even know what I got, but it wasn't very useful. Also, another huge hit there as well. Zadina, carrying it over the line, stops up. Great pass to Kachur, who's got a lane, tries to take a shot. That also will not make it through. Vrana, walking out. He tries to stop at five hole, and it won't go. It literally slid across the crease and did not go in the net. But there is some tremendous pressure here from the Washington Whales. I'm trying my best not to be biased, because obviously, you know... I, I am the person behind the Washington Whales, of course. So I'm, I'm doing my best here, but it's not always easy. You know, I do want to win. I'm a competitive guy. Ehlers is going to get dropped now. What's all these big hits? What's going on? I, I'm pretty sure I don't have any sliders turned up or anything. It should just be pretty normal. But anyway, yeah, lots of big hits going on and lots of hit attempts nonetheless. Brent Burns going to carry it over the line. That will be offside. Going to have a face-off in the neutral zone here. Still one to nothing for the Whales. Yamamoto getting deleted. I, I don't know if he's hurt or not. I seriously have no idea. They might be saying something. Oh, someone tried to take him out after he got up too. I love it, boys. Oh, he's still on the bench. Never mind. We're good. I mean, I don't love it, boys. Um, Don't do that because I'm not biased towards my team. Who's going to win the draw? Will it be Shifley or will it be whoever that is? It's going to be Shifley because of course it is. Nice job. Oh, no. We gave up a breakaway here. Hughes coming in. He doesn't really get a breakaway because he kind of stopped skating for whatever reason. Uh, you know, I'm not here to judge. So maybe he thought he was doing the right thing. But I assure you he was not. Zaka with the puck. Gets it. Nice pass to Hughes. Nice pass to Hamilton who's in the open. That will rebound out to Pavel Zaka who is going to bury one for the Lumberjacks. And that will tie this game up. And I think we were running out of time here in the first period as well. So we might just be headed to period number two with a tie hockey game now at 1-1. One to 11-15 one. to go in the first. And the teams are all knotted up here again. Will any team get a chance before the time expires? No, they will not. That's going to be all she wrote heading into period number two. So a very jam-packed period. Lots of action there. And we have a 1-1 one -one hockey game. Heading in to period number two. I'm not going to keep any of the player or goalie stats during the round robin play. Mostly because the goalies are going to get destroyed. <laughs> you know, right now it's four shots and three shots and they both have a goal. So yeah, the goalie stats are just going to be horrendous. I I'm going to save that for the the playoffs, which I will they'll also still be bad. But at least then the game is doing it for me and I don't have to do that. So yeah, that's, that's my excuse right now. I'm just too lazy simple as that <laughs> meanwhile i created eight teams reached out to seven other people and uh, i don't anyway pasternak goes for a shot that's gonna be saved and another great save on the rebound there bergeron was on the doorstep not able to bury it here comes nick letty up the ice he was actually a last minute addition because i was gonna put in moritz but i decided to go with nick letty instead nurse with the puck now my cats are going absolutely insane on the other side of this wall so hopefully they calm down here but that's uh you know not related to the game nick letty with the puck up the ice he's gonna stop up get it to kyle connor who is great at what he does for a living by the way back over to ehlers not much going on there dougie hamilton pinned against the boards behind the net ehlers now pinned as well that will get freed over to bergeron carrying it up the ice kind of gets caved in there the Whales will take it back. Timo is going to get absolutely dropped. Wow. I don't know why all these hits are happening, honestly. I really don't have an explanation for you. But this is hockey, baby. Just a couple of big bone-crunching hits here in game number one, to say the least. Timo carrying the puck up the ice. Going to get destroyed there. Not really. Hurdle walking out. Not going to score. Now pinned against the boards. What's he going to do with it? He's going to lose it. Stone tries to win that battle, but it comes back out to the Whales. Timo going to ultimately win that war. Hurdle now goes behind the net to Larkin. Larkin back to the point. Pionk to Timo Meyer. 
Larkin has it down low and Stone will strip him of the puck. Now here come the Lumberjacks the other way. 1-1 one, one hockey game. Halfway through Drysaddle with a great deke. He is absolutely the biggest fan of the one-touch dekes. Like I would, I would say that he's the number one fan, actually. I've never seen someone do more one-touch dekes than that man. Charlie McAvoy in over the blue line. He's coming. Goes for a pass in the slot. That slap shot will not get through properly. And that would have been a very good scoring chance, to say the least. Bertuzzi going to dump it in now. Puck goes around the boards. McAvoy going to get rubbed off the puck there. Hurdle now has it. Walks out. Goes for a backhand. He's going to miss the net. Anders Lee gets it to Hurdle. Back to Brent Burns. Across to Dobson. Back down to Hurdle again. Doesn't get the shot off. Yamamoto is back, ladies and gentlemen. He has returned to the matchup. Good for him. I'm happy to see that he is okay. He sure with the puck in the corner. Gets pinned again. It's <laughs> like Timbits hockey here. Just swarming the puck. That's what it seemed like anyway. Couture stops up, goes for a pass to Lee. Lee now carrying it up, goes for a cross ice pass to Bertuzzi. Bertuzzi walking into the middle, takes a shot. That will go over the net. Pacioretty, now the other way. It's a very back and forth game so far. Goes for a shot, Hellebuck will get that in the oven mitt, and that will create a face off. There's the goalie stats, if anyone was curious. I mean, it's, it's not like they're, you know, matchup stats here, but anyway. Couture, going to win it back to Pulock. What's Pulock going to do? He's going to... I don't know what that was exactly. He just took his sweet time and no one challenged him. But he did get the puck up. To be fair, it was an okay pass. Puck is now coming back the other way, though. Zaka goes for another shot. A uh, kerfuffle in front of the net will result in Nick Letty coming out with the puck for the Wales. Nick Letty now passes it over to Couture, who's going to get the puck deep in the zone. He is living up to his... Mid-period interview, I can only imagine. He probably said get pucks deep. That's the, the go-to. So he, he's definitely living up to what he said at least. You know, he's not a liar. I'll give him that. Verona coming back the other way. And that will do it for period number two. We have a 1-1 hockey game here. And what an absolute destructive hit that was. Boom. 1-1 hockey game still. No score in the second period. We will go into period number three with a 1-1 game. Washington is currently being outshot 8-3. Let's see if they can try to get some more biscuits in the basket here. Or I guess at least on the basket. You know, it doesn't have to go in. Just towards it. Kyle Connor with the puck. Carries it up. Goes for a little fancy deke there. But he loses it. And now the Lumberjacks will get possession. But a huge battle against the boards here. McDavid and Ehlers. McDavid will come out with it. Pasternak is going to get dropped like a two-foot gimme. Holy crap. Absolutely destroyed there. And he goes for the revenge hit. I honestly kind of missed it there. We didn't get to see if the hit was, in fact, a big one or not. But I, for the storyline, I'm going to assume it was. So they are now in a war. That's the, you know, official title of the article. It's going out tomorrow. McDavid pinned against the boards. Gets the puck back. Dougie Hamilton gets it to Bergeron in the middle. Pasternak picks it up, takes a shot. But a great save by Connor Hellebuck. Bergeron in the middle to McDavid now. To Dougie. Back to Bergeron. To McDavid. A backhand shot. And thankfully Pulak was there for the rebound. Because otherwise that would have been a wide open net for the Lumberjacks. Who are once again coming back the other way. McDavid goes for a pass. Actually Larkin is going to stop that one. And now he's in over the line. Takes a whistler. But Leonard will put that in the glove. And we have a face off to the right slash left of Leonard. Depending on on how that works. Dreisaitl versus Barzal in the dot here. Who will emerge victorious? It's going to be Dreisaitl wins it back to Dougie Hamilton and gets it over to Taylor Hall, who spins back, taking his time. The AI love doing that. Somehow, oh, he's doing it again. The mind games, people. It is unbelievable. This man is very creative. Dreisaitl with it in the middle now. He gets a shot off. Connor Hellebuck will put that one in the glove as well. 12-18 remaining. In the third period of this contest, game is still 1-1, one one, and Washington still being heavily outshot here. Those stats are literally irrelevant to everything we see going on, but in case you wanted to see them, they're there. So, you know, you can't complain um, that there's no stats because there's some right there. <laughs> like I said, they're not related to this series at all. I don't know what it is. Maybe they're last year's stats or something. But, oh, hits the post. The puck meets Irene, and, oh, man. Just missed the net there as well. Larkin walking out 
Goes for a shot that will be kicked aside. And right in front of the net, that is going to be buried by Matthew Barzal. The Washington, I almost called them wizards. And oh, maybe there is a wizard on this team after watching that. What kind of celebration was that? That was a little spooky. Either way, Barzal going to put the Washington Whales in the lead. 2-1 to one here in the third period. 10 minutes to go. Shea Theodore pinned against the boards. Nice battle here. Theodore will emerge victorious, but Pacioretty not able to get it. Now Bertuzzi goes for a shot. That will not make it through. Shea Theodore now is getting pinned against the boards as well. Nico carries it behind the net. Gets it up to Yamamoto. I don't know why I said behind the net. He absolutely did not go behind the net. He went in front of the net, but that's neither here nor over there. Shea Theodore with it at the point. Can he get knocked off of it? William Carlson picks it up now. Goes across the ice to Neil Pionk to Hurdle, who gets it up to Bertuzzi. Will Washington be able to win game number one here? There is still six and a half to go. And honestly, I feel like the pressure has been about even in this third period, whereas period number two was all Vancouver. What a save by Connor Hellebuck. That is unbelievable, but that was bound to happen. Jack Hughes going to get the puck in the slot. An absolute boomer. Sends it home, and that will tie this game up at 2-2. The game is all even yet again. Five minutes to go here in the third period, and I don't know if I mentioned this before or not. I probably would have already, because this is literally the first thing I'm recording, by the way. Uh, I'm waiting for some people to send me their team still. Uh, so this is why this matchup is occurring. But anyway, um, yeah. If you lose in overtime, you don't get anything from it. It's just an L. So you either win or you lose. That's it. There's no in-between. It's a W or an L. So that's that. Pugliarvi carrying it up the ice. Goes for a little toe drag. Gets it to Zaka, who has now got it on the dot there. Hughes over to Martinez, who is able to walk in. Tries to get a pass off. But Zadina going to pick that off. And he is carrying it up the ice to Couture. Gets hit, but manages to make the play still. Brent Burns has it. Gets it to Verona in front of the net. Zaka will pick that up, which is a good thing because that was a very threatening opportunity, I must say. Right in front of the net there. Robin Leonard could have still made the save, but you never know in those situations. This is a big draw here. Shifley versus McDavid. Faceoffs are currently 7-5. to five. Score is deadlocked at 2. Shots are probably still in favor of the Lumberjacks. I unfortunately do not have those stats readily available. I hate that for me, because that would give me a lot more to talk about. Oh, Pasternak goes for a shot, but Hellebuck going to make a big stop there. Goes to pass it in front, but Kyle Connor going to pick it off. We are now down to 40 seconds in this contest. Score is still 2-2. Two two. Shifley gets it in the middle. Goes for a shot. Won't make it through, though. Connor knocked off the puck by Martinez. His teammate tries to come in to help him out. But Martinez is still going to come out on top. Gets it to Bergeron. Pasternak now in the slot. That is scary. But Hellebuck with a tremendous glove save to keep his team in it. I'm kind of hoping this goes to 3-on-3 three three and then a shootout. Because I don't know what I set it to. I'm assuming it will. I don't know why we will fight. It's not playoffs yet, anyway. So I'm hoping it goes to a shootout because I'm not down to sit here while these guys duke it out. We might not have to. Never mind, we will. Hellebuck's insane. Larkin with it. Gets it over to Pulock. Barzal now carrying it up the ice. Will get challenged there, but manages to make it through both players. Nice job here by the Whales. Trying to win those little battles and get the puck in. But ultimately, Hamilton will get it back. Bring it down the other way. But time has run out. And we will be headed to overtime here in game number one. Lumberjacks 2, Wales 2, I'll see you in overtime. Yes, it's 3-on-3, three three. fire me vertical. All right, here we go. McDavid, Shifley battling it out once again here at the dot. Shifley will get the better of McDavid this time. Kyle Connor goes for a little one-touch deke there. He's starting to challenge Dreisaitl for the number one fandom position. Pulak has it behind the net. Shifley in front to Kyle Connor, and a great save. Kyle Connor gets it in front again, and another tremendous save from the Lumberjacks netminder. Absolute insanity right there. Goes for a pass, but Kyle Connor going to pick it off. And we have about three minutes to go here in this overtime period before we head to a shootout. Kyle Connor goes for a shot, but Robbie going to stop that one. Draw just in front of Leonard. I'm going to stop giving it directions because I'm really not sure. Kyle Connor goes for a slap shot. That was a bullet, to be fair. But he missed the net, unfortunately. Puck comes all the way back to the whale zone. I feel like this overtime so far has been all Washington. We've got a one-on-one -on -one here. Mark Shifley coming in. Tries to go for a little deke, but Dougie Hamilton will not bite. 
And now Drysaddle is probably going to take offense to that and try a one-touch deke of his own. I told you! What did I tell you? But he couldn't score, unfortunate. Well, I guess unfortunately for him. Kind of good for me because... Well, I'm trying not to be biased. Okay, well, anyway, you get the point. He didn't score, and Hellebuck will freeze the puck. 131 to go here in the overtime period. I'm kind of just now realizing how long these videos are probably going to be because I'm commentating over two games here in a video, and then I, I'm probably going to have some kind of introduction per video that I'll do either before or after. I guess it all depends on how things are. In the middle, Robin Leonard going to make another save. I think the clock is ticking a lot slower now. I, I believe that's how it works anyway. You know, like the last minute goes slower. It's like a, a real minute usually. And I think in overtime, it's like the last two minutes or something. It's like the, the two-minute warning in football. It slows down. Does that happen? Yeah, it clearly does. The time is going real time at the moment. Nice deke! What a goal! Neil Pionk! Wow! That was absurd. The man has just undressed all four players that were currently on the ice for the Lumberjacks. That is an incredible goal to say the minimum. Legendary status, maybe. Neil Pionk gets the puck back on the point and just dingles a few players to put that puck in the back of the net. That is huge. Big W here for the Washington Whales. Unfortunately, an L for the Lumberjacks. But that's only game one. There's still lots of hockey to be played. So I have decided, and this has obviously no comments yet because it's the first one, that I am simply... Not going to talk the whole game, all right? It's going to be kind of like the be a pro. I'll jump in every now and then and sort of maybe do some play-by-play, -play, but for the most part, just get hyped up at the parts that are pretty exciting. But, uh, yeah, we got... I really have to turn off the controller sound. I swear I did. I don't know if you have to do it every time you turn on the console or not, but holy crap, is that annoying. But anyway, we have the Toronto Tomahawks here. And the Boston Bulldogs. And unfortunately, like I said, I was waiting for some people to send their teams in still. But I did have Brent's. And obviously I had mine. Because, you know, I am me. And I'm doing this tournament. So I would hope that I have mine. But I was still waiting for some other people to send it in. And while I was waiting, I decided to record that first game. And that is why, during the intro, I mentioned about Jack Eichel. So, Eichel was able to be picked up by Mr. Tech. However, he's not on the team in that first game because of that. I recorded that video first way before the intro. Like, I'm talking... It was almost a week, I think. Maybe even more. So, yeah. That's that. But we do have Phil's Toronto Tomahawks versus the Tuganators Boston Bulldogs who are going to get scored on right now. Philip Forsberg... Gonna bury one right in front of the net there. The boys are, they're gassed. Holy crap. First goal of the tournament, and they are feeling it. That was a pretty good goal, but I don't know if it was that good. Man, oh man, that was quite the selly. Battle behind the Bulldogs net. Who will come out on top? It will be Tyler Sagan for the Tomahawks. Hughes stops up and ends up losing the puck to Spurgeon. I also turned down that, what is it? I think it's fatigue recovery. Is that setting? What a goal! What an individual effort by Anze Kopitar. Certified beautician just for that alone. I need to see a replay of this, but I, I turned down the fatigue recovery, I think it is, in hopes that the players will, well, the third and fourth line players will come out. And also, if you guys want me to, what we could do is simulate the first two periods like I do in my Be a Pro or something like that, and then just play the third with like an extended time or something like that, you know? So have first two periods simulated, and then jump into the third period where uh, instead of doing, I don't even know what I have it at now, whatever the default is, four or five minutes, something like that. Instead of that, I can turn it to like 10, and then, yeah, have a 10-minute third period or something like that, and we could go that route. I don't know exactly the best way to do that, because um, you can't really simulate a play now game, I don't think. So I'd have to put them into something, but I would, yeah, if you guys want to see that, that's... Still worth doing, in my opinion. So, that was the other idea I had. Um, so, let me know in the comments down below what you guys prefer. Here come the Boston Bulldogs. 1-1 one, one game. I, I, did we even get a replay for Kopitar's goal? Was I too busy talking? Or is there just no replays? Because I'm pretty sure there wasn't a replay. I know there wasn't for the first goal. 
but I'm not sure if there was for the second one or not. I'm going to go ahead and assume there wasn't. But anyway, we have a puck in the slot here for the Tomahawks. Horvat's going to pick it up on the wing. Back to Klingberg, who carries it down low. Stops up, though. Back to Horvat, to Toffoli. Hughes now at the point. Over to Klingberg, who walks in. Takes a shot that is miserably wide of the net. Bulldogs go for a pass in the middle. Carey Price will stop that one, though. 440 to go in the first here, and the score is still 1-1. One one. Brendan Gallagher will get the puck in deep. He is living up to his pre-game interview. Get pucks deep, work hard, you know, all that stuff. Pretend to be on one of those workout bicycles. I don't think, well, they definitely don't do that anymore. I remember they used to, though, which is pretty funny. But anyway, Suzuki carrying it up the wing now in over the blue line. Holds on his back and goes for a pass in the middle, but that will be blocked by the Boston defender. Coming in now is number 17. Every time I see that number, I just think of Kovalchuk. Brown gets it behind the net. He walks out, and that is going to be a beautiful goal. Wow, he gets it behind the net, has the patience, and has the sight to look up and see that he's able to walk straight out in front of the net. A nice little wraparound far side there, and we have a 2-1 game here in favor of the Boston Bulldogs. I almost called them the Boston Bruins. I was so close, but I held back a great save there from Merzlikens. Just pointing that out. I mean, honestly, it wasn't fantastic or anything, but Miller did have a great chance there, and Merzlikens still shut him down. So I'm going to give credit where it's due. That will conclude 20 minutes here. We have a 2-1 lead for Boston after one. Let's see if Toronto... We'll be able to tie it up here in the second, or if Boston will maintain the lead. Here we go, second period of action. Crosby with it, gets it up the wing to Kirill the Thrill, who stops up. Goes for a little deke there, but the defense will step up and take that off of him. Now here comes Pedersen on the wing himself. Manages to sneak past one hit, walks out, goes for a shot, and a great save there. Line with the puck. Skating around his own net. Will he make a pass? Or will he do it all himself? This man is an individual. What a lone wolf. Look at him go. What a legend. All right, up to Latang and Crosby. Get it back to Line. A, honestly. This guy can do it all. Gets pinned against the boards. Forsberg will take that and get it in deep. Latang picks it up in front of the net. Over to Kopitar, who goes for a pass in the middle there. They'll be picked off by Pedersen. Down low, Pedersen goes for a great pass in front there, but no dice. Here are some, once again, completely irrelevant stats. And if you just want to see those, then there you go. Tossing it in there just for you. Big draw win for Boston. Carrying it up now, but that will be broken up real quick. Miller has the puck, gets pinned, and loses it back to the Bruins again. Skating around. This guy is Line A Jr. over here. Gensel now. With it, wins the battle, but the step up there from the Toronto defender will keep the puck in. Sagan pinned against the boards. Wins the battle, comes out with it, passes it back to Klingberg. Cross ice to Hughes and down low to Miller. Back up to Hughes. Klingberg, some D to D passing here. Just too much, honestly, I want to say. Puck finds its way into the middle where Kopitar will pick it up and get it over to Malkin. Now Spurgeon carrying the puck up the ice for the Boston Bulldogs. He's able to walk in, takes a shot. That will be blocked and a great save, but we will see our first power play of the game. Boston going to be one man up here. Klingberg headed to the box. I have officially turned off volume on the controller. So yeah, there we go. I don't know if it's going to save. Maybe I did it on the other account. I'm not sure, but either way... It's off right now, and that's all that matters. Deneau going to take a shot. Carey Price will stop that one up high as we near the midway point of this game. Ekholm will get the puck down the ice, and that will be halfway through the power play here for Boston. But they are coming back on the attack. Horvat with a great back check, but the puck still ends up on Boston's stick here. Pass in the middle. Another great save by Carey Price. Gensel behind the net. Goes for a pass up front. Deneau picks it up. But Price will once again prevent that from entering the net. Pass in front. Goes for a shot that will be just wide of the net. Haskinen goes across the ice to Yossi who just decides he doesn't want the puck anymore apparently. I'm not too sure what that was. But it was a very interesting play to say 
the absolute least. Gallagher goes for a shot, and Merzlikens will save that one with the mitten, and we have a draw. I still don't know if it's the left or the right. I feel like it should be from the goalie's perspective, you know? So, like, if it's to the goalie's right, where he's facing down the ice, then that should be the right. I don't know. That's just my opinion, but that, that could be right. That could be wrong. I'm not sure. Gallagher with it in the slot. Passes it. Klingberg now tries to walk in and take a shot, but that will not go through. Now here comes Victor Arvidsson. Stops at the hash marks. Goes in the middle to Felino, who goes for another pass there, but Granlund will pick that off. And we have Klingberg coming back down the ice here for Toronto. Gets back checked by Arvidsson, and he will lose the puck. Felino has it on the wing. In comes 17. Goes for a play in the middle there, but will not execute. Forsberg goes for a deke. Pedersen gets the puck now. Merzlikens once again going to make a glove stop. Kulikov goes for a great pass there. I don't know why. I was about to say press. A great press to Bjorkstrand. Anyway. Um, so yeah, that's that's why that started off weird there. If the mic... Actually, this mic picks up literally everything. So it absolutely did get that. Anyway, a great pass. Merzlikens going to be there for that one though. And here comes Boston. Stopping up and getting it to Kulikov. Kulikov gets pinned by Pedersen. And Toronto will come out with it. Pavelski now coming in on a one-on-three. <laughs> he is a lone man. Gets it to the Foley, though. Heisken in with a shot that's just going to miss the net. I feel like I can't pronounce my words right now. Not sure what that is. It kind of happens, uh, honestly, like 50% of my videos, I want to say. I just can't speak properly. But regardless, our second period is over. And the score is still 2-1 to one for the Boston Bulldogs. The third period is here. Boston is up by 1. They managed to hold that lead all the way through the second period. But let's see what happens here in the third. Kaprizov goes for a pass in the middle. Won't connect with anyone. Liney has it in the slot now. That will be saved by Price. A little fumble in front of the net there. And a very ballsy pass by Carey Price. He must have been watching some tapes of Tino Manny in the goalie be a pro to pull off something like that. Pavelski is getting completely obstructed there. That was absurd. And naturally, they will now have a power play because of that. Toronto with a draw win. Radulov walks out, goes for a shot, tries to pick up his own rebound, but the defender will deny him a goal. I, like, that was pretty much a guaranteed goal, I want to say, right there. Kopitar picks it off. A great penalty-killing effort there from Anze. But Forsberg passes it up to Radulov, and Toronto is coming back on the attack here. Goes for a pass in the middle. Ooh, that is just kept in. Klingberg walking in, goes for a shot. A great save once again. Wow. This goalie... Well, honestly, both these goalies are doing quite well. I said I wasn't going to talk the whole game, and then I pretty much did anyway. I mean, not the whole game, but a very large chunk of it, regardless. Kopitar with the puck. Oh, what a deke. If he makes that pass, and it's because, that could have been the goal of the tournament. For sure. Holy crap. For anyone wondering, I meant to say tournament there. Just so you know. Also, there's still no logos in the bottom scoreboard. Why? What's up with that? Is it that hard to just toss the logo there? Apparently it is. Well, whatever. Crosby goes for a deke, but will get bumped off the puck. So again, carries it over the blue line. Hustling in. Pass in the slot to Radulov. Another great opportunity and another great save. Crosby picks it up behind his own net there and passes it to his goalie. Bold strategy, but it looks like it paid off. Kaprizov coming up the wing. We are nearing the halfway point of the third period, and it is still 2-1 to one in favor of Boston. Victor Arvidsson will get need. Holy, how's that not a penalty? Guy literally just had his knee chopped off by someone else's knee. Toffoli has it in the zone. Doing some spinning plays here, and he will lose it. Not too sure what happened there, but Merzlikens will smother it, and we're going to have a draw to the left of Elvis Merzlikens. Jake Gensel walks out, lets one absolutely rip, and that will be just wide of the net. Another great chance here, but Carey Price will put that one in the mitten. 6-17 to go. The score remains in favor of Boston. Roman Yossi carries the puck to Horvat. That will be stopped by Merzlikens. Five minutes to go here in... The third period, time is running out. Toronto needs to act soon. We have a draw here to the right of Merzlikens. This is a pretty big draw. Who will come out on top? It will be Pedersen. Oh no, what a great defensive play there from Boston. 
And now they are headed back the other way. And this is also just killing more time. And on top of that, they're getting another goal. Might as well get the insurance marker, right? Well, there you have it. It is now 3-1 to one for the Boston Bulldogs. And things are looking up for them and down for Toronto. Now under a minute to go, the Toronto tender is headed to the bench. Merzlikens will stop that one. 48 seconds, three to one for Boston. Things are not looking good for Toronto here, but it is still only round robin play and it is still only the first game. So, you know, it's nothing to worry about just yet, Phil. Although I'm sure you're probably not worrying too much anyway, because not a whole lot on the line here other than maybe some bragging rights. Yossi carrying the puck. Goes across the ice to Granlin, who will dump it in. 33 seconds to go. Carries it, and in front of the net to Brodeen. That was risky, but it worked out. Felino now has it. He's over. What a generous human being. Passes it in the middle to Victor Arvidsson, who will bury it and make it 4-1 to one for Boston. That is definitely going to be the nail in the coffin, and that is all she wrote for Toronto in this one. Yep, there we go. Boston will win their first game. Toronto will lose their first game in a pretty convincing fashion. Ended up being four to one, but honestly, it was a closer game than the score suggests. There we have it. Week number one. I don't know why I'm calling it week, by the way. I don't know if I plan on doing this weekly or what, but um, yeah, anyway, week one. <laughs> week one is now done. Hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to comment about how you would like me to have these games simulated slash played. And that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one.